in the town of Plainfield, New Jersey. The Parliament's tightened up their thing while hanging at a barbershop with George Good Hair. Put everything when I'm at the barbershop. <laughs> My last name definitely rings bells. Do you know what DJ G is now? I'll be like, yeah, that's my father. It was a cold Thursday morning. I woke up at the airport and started working on my book. I was there for three hours until two young guys walked past. They was going to Burger King. And what caught my eye is one of them was wearing a Gucci blanket. And they both had on so many diamonds, I thought that it had to be fake. Moments go by and I turned around to see what they were doing. That's when the guy with the Gucci blanket on was staring over my shoulder. After almost 10 minutes of talking to him, a couple of his fans walked up and started asking could they take a picture with him. That's when I found out that his name was Little Baby. Alabama. Oh yeah, my father's from Phoenix City. Yeah, I'm from New Jersey. From I write books, plays, films. Oh, we fuck with Jersey, man. You know yeah, we yeah. fuck with that Jersey, yeah. man. Don't do that. Yeah. Working with Lil Baby, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. oh, you yeah, know. Right. Straight We're project, big baby. Straight project, baby. Oh yeah, no doubt. That's just good. Gunna Gang. You know, Gunna Gang. Long you know, live Stank. Long live Mark. Long live Mark. Purple Baby, man. Documentary free, style, free, 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 yeah. yeah. free, yeah. 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 free, 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 the Plainfield author, not no, the number one, oh, huh? Yeah, we out here. Uh, you feel me? Woo. We out here. <laughs> you feel me? It's in a bad AG. Let me paint the picture of coming to Atlanta. But first, let me spin you back to my past. Saturday, September 12th, 2015. I got off the cheap $40 bus with all of my luggage. I had just wrote a one-man stage play, several movie scripts, and had just jumped out on faith and came out of here. I had an aunt who stayed in Dunwoody. So when I arrived in Doraville that day, I called her thinking I was gonna surprise her. I had been to her condo several times and I also used to stay with her in New Jersey. So I thought everything was cool. My first intentions was to go to her house and then get her to take me to Vidalia, which is where all of our family was at. My uncle Bob was sitting on 136 acres down there and I wanted to talk to him. And since my aunt used to always travel back and forth because she was from there, I thought it wouldn't be a problem for her to take me. But little did I know, as soon as I get there and call her, my aunt cursed me out and hung up the phone on me, leaving me stranded in Atlanta. Within my first week, I lost everything and became homeless. Let me spin you back even further. My grandparents came from the Vidalia Lions area which is almost three hours away from Atlanta. My grandfather had 17 brothers and sisters, and my grandmother had 21 brothers and sisters. In the mid-50s, they had two children and moved to Newark, New Jersey, where they had my mother. 
My grandfather got a job at General Motors, and then he brought a house in Plainfield. He had eight children and worked at General Motors for 40 years. My grandfather got all of his kids jobs at General Motors. He also got my father a job the same year I was born. In the early 80s, my whole family fell to the crack epidemic and lost their jobs, all except for my father and one of my aunts. My aunt moved to Atlanta in the early 2000s and retired down here. By 2006, I got shot five times from behind and then started a four-year bid at East Jersey State Prison. That's when I started writing a book. By 2007, I had three books. I came home in 2010, started a publishing company, and I published all of my books. I did pretty good. I remember a situation where a brother from the projects that I grew up with had gone off to college and had graduated. And another brother that I had grown up with was coming home from prison. And I remember like people saying like, yo, you know, so-and-so just came home from college. You know, he just graduated. And our responses, myself included, would be like, oh, that's cool. But when they said like, you know, so-and-so just came home from jail, it was like, oh, what, man, where you at? I got to say, it was an excitement, more of an exciting um, news to hear from someone coming home from jail versus graduating from college, man. And um, that's, that's how it's designed in the hood. In the first scene, a 29-year-old gangster named A.G. makes his first appearance in maximum security after he gets into a fight with several correctional officers in the last prison. Just several months after being shot five times and locked back up one month apart, this badly wounded inmate quickly finds himself in even more trouble, which is when he gets four and a half months in lockup. Reality kicks in once he gets a message from his OG named Goldie, an old head who is currently serving 27 years in the same prison. In the second scene, AG starts to process some of the information from Goldie's letter which highlights their enemy turned successful author, who Goldie says wrote a book on their beef in the 90s, and is talking about a 14-year-old AG who opens fire on them and shoots one of his boys in broad daylight. While reflecting on their old beef, AG takes a trip down memory lane where writing the book first pops in his mind. But how when he can't read or write? After he receives several letters from his family and friends, one of those letters inspires him to change his life. In the final scene, AG is just getting off the phone with his Aunt Jeannie, who is teaching him how to pray. After rereading one of Aunt Jeannie's letters, for the first time, AG opens up the Bible and starts to read it. After praying and asking God to help him make some plans, this is when AG finally starts to write a book. However, that one book, which later becomes From Suspect to Prospect, it would eventually turn into two more books before he leave lockup.